it's really cool. I mean, I'm like, I'm hanging out with Jeff Johns on set ahead of DC and I'm like talking to him in this outfit. And I'm like, I guess I'm the guy. Cause I mean, there's who else's approval do I need to be this character? It's not like I'm being a cosplay pretending to be this character. I'm right. Like, to Jeff Johns, I am this guy. I am out. Lou, what's going on? Dude, I'm so sorry, man. This <laughs> this has become insane. This press tour. I'm so sorry. How you doing, man? <laughs> no worries, man. I had um I interviewed the actress Olivia Lacardi from Deuce <laughs> just like an hour ago. And she was running late because she had like a, a big hole in her windshield. So uh Whoa. Yeah, so things are, okay. are happening for everyone, you know. Okay. Uh, Were so, you calling me? Were you calling me? Uh no. <laughs> okay, okay. So all huh. totally understandable. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm a lot of anticipation leading up to tomorrow's yeah. release of Dreamcatcher. So it's all exciting. How are you? I'm doing good. I actually spoke to your co-stars, Nikki and Zachary, uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, already Perfect. got a good good start cool, there. Man. Nice. Yeah. Where yeah. you at? How'd it go? It was great. They were they were awesome together, by the way. Nice, dude. It's cool, man. Where you at? Where you say? I'm in West LA. Uh, that's where I live. I'm from Santa Monica originally. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, this is right before the craziness of West Hollywood, yet it's already ha has that West uh, LA beachy vibe. So, what it's about you? Right, right spot. I'm in Chicago currently. I'm from here, oh. but uh, left LA. I was living in LA till the pandemic started. So now kind of back home, but hoping to make my way again, and hopefully later this year when things kind of calm down and get better there. So I like your Chicago accent. It's legit. <laughs> it's, it's noticeable, right? <laughs> can't, can't lie. That's for sure. It's there yeah. all the time. Nice, man. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. You know, it's, it's cool because uh, I've interviewed your dad uh, uh, several times. So I'd met him too. He's done a few comic cons in, in Chicago here too. So nice. Uh, okay. It, it's cool to kind of keep up the family li lineage and, and get a chance to talk to you now. Yeah. I need to have a kid pretty soon so you can interview him too. So <laughs> right. we gotta, yeah, get I gotta that get going. <laughs> the uh, of the podcast. Yeah, although if you're near my case, man, dating's been a misery, so I can't give you good uh, good advice uh, on anything that's out there because it ain't I don't, for me. I don't blame you, man. It's like it's like you know, like now we're relegated to like this, like online to meet people, and then you're like, yeah. and then I got so many things going on that I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like meet someone, and then if I if I happen to like make out with this person, then I could get COVID. Like I'm like, no, I'm right. not you sacrifice. think about it, it's like psychologically alters your like way of like just meeting and how you interact with someone right yeah yeah dude it's wild so oh, i'm just i'm just taking i'm throwing my hands up and i'm just gonna wait till some type of normalcy comes back because i just got back from atlanta shooting this thing and traveling and i'm like you know what i'm i have so many good things going on i'm not gonna not gonna risk it yeah no question plus you have a, you have so. a cool movie coming out you know the funny thing i talked to zachary and uh Nikki about it's like can you imagine like this movie takes place in like this underground rave basically party scene I'm like this seems like three centuries ago because like over and, uh, the past year we're all like locked up um it's, but tell me how how the feel of the movie is cool because it's it's got a dark kind of theme to it but also it's got this like party mode of it uh how was the set like and just kind of being on set did it feel like kind of a party that you guys are in I mean, kind of. Yeah. I mean, I, I was only on for a day and we filmed all my stuff in one day at the house. Um, but even the house was like it was in the Hollywood Hills. It was beautiful. It was uh, and uh, like a lot of the cast was there that wasn't necessarily shooting. Um, and everyone was so supportive and having a blast and everyone was excited to be a part of it. And I think it'll show in the film because, I mean, like you said, it's it's definitely reminiscent of a time long ago that feels <laughs> yeah, like right. it's a long like a, just another world that's like, wow, like we're looking out from the outside and being like, wow, what was it like? Yeah, it, it's insane in that way, you know, to think about. <laughs> this is kind of where we lived in, but now it's a lot different. Uh, yeah. Tell me how you kind of came around the script initially, what, what appealed to you about the role. And like you said, you, you know, you got to you make an impact, but, you know, it, you got to watch out for you in the movie. Right. Yeah. Uh, Did you see it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was, um, you know, I was working on a show called 911. I mm -hmm. played a firefighter for three episodes. So, and for some reason, they like to see me as a, uh, as a hero, you know? So I'm like, I'll go with it for now. Like superhero, SWAT guy, this, this, this. Right. <laughs> so, um, 
I got the script and it was just this chance to play this character that was, that was, that was, you know, he was just, his, his intentions are in the wrong place and he wants to, um, he's part of this major cover up that's trying to happen. So I, it was just definitely a fresh environment, you know, especially working in network television for, for a while. It was nice mm-hmm. to be in an independent situation where I could really let loose and take my time. And the situation that I get into in the movie, it turned out to be quite precarious was actually, really great because I could really just relax into it. And I think it really conveyed a really eerie, um, a eerie situation. And it turns out to be not so positive for Colton, my character. Right. Yeah. And no, no doubt about that. You know, and that's cool. Do you, uh, what kind of roles, like you mentioned, you kind of been on these network shows, you know, playing the, mm-hmm. um, in, in SWAT and nine one one kind of these, you know, heroes in a sense, or these tough guys in a lot of ways too. What sort of roles are you attracted to? Do you want to do something completely different, remove like a romance or, or do you like kind of the action, you know, physicality? Cause you know, obviously it's kind of your background too, you know, fitness and all that. Um, yeah. so it lends to it. What, what sort of roles do you like and feel most comfortable with? I, you know, I love, I love what I'm doing now. I mean, I just got back from Atlanta shooting this uh, star girl as this full blown superhero with right. like cut, like, I mean, the costume is completely tailored to my specifications and it's, it's really cool. I mean, I'm like, I'm hanging out with Jeff Johns on set ahead of DC and I'm like talking to him in this outfit and I'm like, I guess I'm the guy. Cause I mean, there's who else's approval do I need to be this character? It's not like I'm being a cosplay pretending to be this character. I'm right. Like, to Jeff Johns, I am this guy. I am our So, um, I mean, that's the, those have all been really great. I mean, the SWAT stuff is fantastic. The fireman stuff is really cool. But, you know, I, I mean, it's I have a film coming out called Nightshade that's um, the lead of. It's another psychological suspense thriller. I love what I've been gifted with so far. Um, I would definitely like something that I can really sink my teeth into, I think, in a romantic capacity, but also um, something that can really... I like the action comedy genre. You know, I studied comedy for years, for about five or six years, intense, intensely, and it's it's so much more than one would think in terms of land delivering a joke, landing a joke, um, and doing what's essentially the right thing in terms of a comedic uh, perspective. So you know, I I don't and I I don't really it's I feel like it's it, it's on its way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so, but I definitely like to be challenged. So, and in the hero stuff is, I don't want to say it's easy, but it definitely, it's in my wheelhouse. So it's been good so far. No question. You know, I think that movie that you mentioned, uh, a friend of mine, Josh Murray's in it. Which one? Uh, the the one that you're starring in. Uh, Josh Murray is was in Final Frequency. Oh, me. Final Frequency. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I knew there was a movie he was in with you. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I know you were starring in that one too. So. Yeah. Um, Josh is great. Uh, he shows up on set. I'm like, what, what, this guy's enormous now I, I'm the one who was, I look like a short actor now what the yeah, hell he's a tall dude yep yeah oh that's funny yeah, it was good yeah it was fun man that was I mean that again was like uh I was a cop slash like uh former military uh kind of a rent-a-cop but then we ended up saving the day it was great him and Josh and I have a great fight scene at the end and mm-hmm. it's cool man so yeah that's awesome what do you like to do kind of in your free time? Obviously, you you have a background, you know, you come from an entertainment family and stuff, but what are some things you're kind of drawn to, to, to do in your off time when you're not working or filming and whatnot? I mean, exercise and working out is part mm-hmm. of the job, so I don't necessarily consider that some of my, my leisure activity. I feel like it's, I have to define it as work. Um, otherwise, because it's part of my brand, it's part of the, uh, the look and the, the, what I'm trying to convey as an actor. Um, I paint, and if you want to get a little check wow, out of my okay. little studio right here, check this yeah. out. I'm working on this piece right here, right there. I don't know if you could oh, see my... it. Damn, is that the yeah. Hulk? That's the Hulk, dude. Wow. So then there's that, um, and then I got a bunch of other ones. But uh, yeah, I, I paint because it's a way to really kind of release my creative juices without um, without just being obsessed with the acting, the auditioning. Because I get so many auditions, and I go off for so many things, and you know, I can I can easily get lost in the fantasy of what it would be like if I did book it and blah 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 blah. Right, it's crazy. It messes with your head. You got to have an outlet, you know, or kind of yeah, escape yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And so the art the artwork just comes out of me, and and um, I definitely I mean it's lo- I love to do it. It's it's and it's for me. It's not you know I've, I've been selling prints just to kind of people have been like, why don't you sell your work? Why don't you sell your work? And I've done so, but for me, it's just a way to really breathe and to 
be creative in a whole different way. So how I love long, to paint. How long have you been doing this? This is phenomenal work. I mean, oh, thanks, man. Um, let's see. I can show you some stuff too. Check this yeah. out. So then I got. So then. Uh, so I'm working on this one here. Oh wow! And then up here, and then this Batman one that I just can't get a hold of. Yeah, that, so just, that Catwoman and Harley there. I love yep. the upside down thing of it. That's so creative. You got that right there. There's a pug. And then this Wonder Woman right here. Wow. So, um, so it's just like, you know, it's always something new and different and something I can really kind of sink my teeth into. But do um, you like sketches that you drew first and then kind of paint it over? Like, how do you like look at something to get that, you know, visual? How do you approach it? I'm kind of curious. Or does it all come from your mind without even having to, to look at pictures and you just go at it? No, I mean, I try to... Uh, I try to make uh, an image that it, it's like kind of the ideal of of what the character that I'm trying to trying to do is like this with this Hulk piece. It started yeah. out as like this fight scene, and then I'm like, what? I'm not an I'm not a comic book artist. It's like, what am I doing? And then I just kind of put it into the the case that like people want to see the artist's perspective. Right. So the Hulk has a been story behind that, you know, or an idea. Yeah. And the Hulk, I mean, has been such a huge part of my life uh, in terms of just being my dad's the Hulk. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, one way or the other, it's always been like very, uh, uh, a very integral part of, of who I become. And, and, you know, it's, it's an interesting relationship I have with the Hulk because it's more than just a character that I like. It's like, I mean, I, I was raised by the Hulk, essentially. Right. Like my dad is, people are like, who's your favorite Hulk, Banner, um, Edward Norton or Mark Ruffalo? I'm like, First of all, watch your mouth because that's Bruce Banner. There's no Hulk. They they get credit for two roles. They he does. They, neither of those guys did anything to be uh, to to prepare for the Hulk. They just get thrown this amazing character. Nobody cares as much about Bruce Banner as they do about the Hulk. But then right. to be to be the Hulk, you have to be like this monster of a dude. So then all of a yeah. sudden they don't have to work out and they don't have to be a world championship bodybuilder. And then they're getting credit for the Hulk. So, Your father um, wasn't CGI, really. He was like no. actually ripped. You know what I mean? It was just painted on and stuff. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't. It wasn't like a computer graphic or CGI making him, you know, into something. Yeah. Um. So that's. Uh, so then, yeah. So when it comes to the art stuff, I just kind of, you know, I kind of go with what how I feel, but I want it to be kind of mm -hmm. separate from what I'm doing. You know, it's a way to keep my mind busy during crazy, crazy times. So yeah. that's. I do that. I love to cook um i love to you know i gain inspiration from hanging out with my wild friends hanging out uh traveling a little bit here and there um i try to keep it as normal as possible because now it's becoming this weird hollywood like it's it's wild when you have dreams and you have aspirations and you work towards them and then all of a sudden they never happen when you want them to but like now as things are happening i'm like this shit is getting like real and sorry for mm -hmm. cussing but it's like no, no go it's ahead. it's wild that's, that's but i've been uh a cool hey, perspective right there that you mean because you said that you, when you want things to happen they don't but then you, when you're patient it kind of just starts manifesting and happening that's a really interesting perspective and look at it because you can get caught up in like wanting something to happen and get distraught over when it doesn't happen at the time you mm -hmm. feel like it should be you know yeah because as i'm talking with you right now it's like i'm thinking I'm like, wow. I mean, I've actually done a lot of work. You know, I was, yeah. you know, I was, I remember when I just booked the pilot for SWAT and I had, I, at that point, I mean, I booked a lot of different uh, guest stars on different networks and like top of show stuff. And, and I was, if things were moving along great. And then I'm like, now I'm talking to you. I'm like, I'm like, damn, I'm like, things are like, like becoming real. And, you know, like when I signed on to do this film, I never knew it would have this, this kind of distribution and it's getting a lot of traction and people are really excited about it. And it, for me, it was just a day role that, you know, coming off of 911, I was like, you know, I kind of, should I rest or should I just, I don't, do I need to take this? And then I'm like, you know what? I think it's cool. Um, I love to work. I love to collaborate. So I went about doing it and because of it. I'm talking to you now. So it's, it's cool. It's crazy. And, it, and it's been, you know, and it hasn't been, given to you and it's how you you've been in this industry for you know working already since i think you've done your soap for almost a decade you know you've yeah. been you've been doing work so that's that's hard work in a sense and putting in time paying off you know and a decade is is a big amount of time not only for anyone for any actor but just to have that longevity to even be in this industry a decade and you're going moving forward and bigger and better things are happening that just shows the the kind of the work putting into it and 
the patience, you know, uh, that it, that it takes and, and how it kind of, it, it doesn't happen overnight, no matter what, you know? Yeah, no, if, if it's worth it, it's not, you know, I see all these people that do these one things and then they're this, but you know, it's like, this is such, and I've, I've seen it firsthand. And when I've seen my father and how he does things, and he's withstood like the test of time in this industry. Oh, no it's question. been 40 years and he's still admired for this character that he plays and all these other ones. Um, but I've seen what I've seen basically the, the recipe for how to be a star, how to live like a star, how to, how to uh, prolong your star, your, your, your glow, you know, as a star. So, and I feel like it was just, what am I going to go do? Sell insurance? Like, what am I, you know, I have to, like, I, things just have been in the situation where it's like, these are, it's for you to take if you're willing to work for it. Yep. Um, so, you know, like I fell in love with going to acting class. I fell in love with the stuff that I knew would make me better. Um, I'm, I'm not interested in being uh, just this celebrity kid. I mean, it's funny. People ask me, has the name helped or hurt? And I'm like, it, I, it got to a point where I'm like, it wouldn't matter what my name would be. And you can, I, I, I implore you to look back at my credits and find one that would, that would connect with my father's influence. And there's probably, right. there's not one, you know, and I'm, I'm especially starting I, off in soaps, you know, it's a polar opposite, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done young and the restless days of our lives and, you know, all these people have agendas and they have jobs to do. And just because a kid has the same name as a, as a guy who played a TV monster, that's not going to help us. You know, that's not going to help. It's not going to help 911 to have Lou Ferrigno's son who can't act, you know? So right. I, 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 I approach this like a real career and a real job and a craft. And plus a lot of people who are hiring, they weren't around, you know, when your dad was in his heyday too. So it's kind yeah. of new to them too. It's, it's a, the generations change and the people who are, now kind of in charge of this industry and working in it they're they're just a new blood in it too so yeah very but, much so. Uh, you know it, it's interesting when you say it's kind of you, you guys you and your father come from a really you know fitness background and you know it, it kind of implies into acting too you can't get built or, or fit overnight you know it takes work and effort and hard time uh and and to to make this happen to have a great physique or have great you know um kind of fitness you know and same thing with acting it doesn't happen overnight and if it does you know there's there's shortcuts to everything but those don't last those are temporary so uh doing yeah. it the right way is really kind of what not only it's self uh motivational and, and you know satisfactory but also it, it builds your future too yeah and what i realized is like every audition that i you know like there's been auditions that i used to go on that i was like oh my goodness this is the one if i book this one blah 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 and take yep. it too so seriously and then you know after a while it's like i'm in this place of like not booking and then like why am i booking and then you get into lost into this like paradox of like what am i doing like if is it working is it not working you know um but every one of those i don't want to even say failed auditions because it's like you learn something from every single mm -hmm. one whether directly or, you know, it really calluses your soul. And like when I now when it comes to either awkward situations in life, or even like if I have to go and do interviews or anything like, I've been through situations where it's been completely embarrassing. I've gone through it, I've experienced it, and I've come out okay. And I have a story to tell. So it's like, it's really calloused my soul in the sense where it's hard for me to be put in a situation where I'm feeling awkward. And, and uh, I can't, deliver in because i've been in really awkward situations and uh, and i'm still here you know you know what it's always it's not about the the finish line looks great and that's what we strive for the, the mountaintop but it's the journey that that makes you you know that builds you the character and and all that it, when you look back the journey's kind of the the ups and downs of roller course that's the most kind of important and and best part because once you kind of reach the mountaintop it's the journey that got you there you know when you look Absolutely. back at what you've gone through to get there it's it builds that appreciation because if you get to the finish line up front then you didn't really work for it or experience anything so so what you're saying makes so much sense you know how yeah. going through the ups and downs and, and awkward situations and embarrassments it's all building towards where you eventually want to get to and will be yeah i mean with anything in life man you have to want it and everything that doesn't go your way put presents you with the test to say do you want this still or do you want to do something else and if you get this immediate success when you're young 
Um, you know, when I was younger, like I was never given like opportunities to like do things like this or be in this or, or do this. And I was like, I wonder like, why, like, why aren't I getting these? Why aren't I? Because, you know, my father is this. Yeah. Then I realized I'm like, I'm not getting these for a reason. And I'm going to, I'm going to get them. I'm going to go get them. And then I, every time I was like, I would go to events with my dad and he would be the guy and they don't, people would know me. And I'm like, I'm going to show these people. I'm going to show them that they once knew me and they wanted nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. And then and I'm going to show them. I don't know how I'm going to show them, but I'm going to show them. And I know it's possible because I have a living example right in front of me that's that came. I mean, my dad was from Brooklyn. He was, uh, you know, from a b- very abusive household. He uh, had lost his hearing at a very young age. I mean, this guy had had this the deck stacked against him. And like, in my opinion, a very biased opinion, but I think he's one of the greatest American success stories. I mean, this guy went from this this bullied like kid in, in from Brooklyn uh, with, I mean, a, to one of the most beloved characters in TV history. Like this guy is still to this day admired across the globe more oh, than, yeah. I, I mean, I, I went to Thailand in 09 and I paid with a check and my name was on it. And the person's like, are you going to like And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. I've, I would go across the planet and they still know who my father is, you know? That's an impact, but you know what? You, you make yourself that, you know, you can always, no matter what, like people like to make excuses like, Oh, I came from this situation. No, you can, your father is the embodiment of that. You can come from any situation and make a life for yourself. You know, you don't have to use that as an excuse, your upbringing, because you can still yes. be in charge of your own future, you know, no matter what. Very much, very much. So I, I really enjoyed talking. This was a blast. I, I'm glad. Yeah, dude. I'm glad you were able to connect with me and just share these stories. It's so cool to hear. And it's so cool to, to see you do these things. You know, I'm definitely following your career and, and excited for what's, what's next, you know, cause it's just the start of it in a, in a weird way, you know, even though yeah. you've been doing it for a while, but yeah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's going it, to, the trajectory is on point and I'm excited and there's a lot of good things coming and I'm, I'm more thrilled to, than anyone else. And it's, I'm going to deliver something good for the fans. So we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait to talk to you on, on what's coming up soon again, you know, catch up again and, and see what, what, what's the next step. Nice dude. Thanks Jim. I really appreciate it, man. You got it, Lou. Take care. Stay safe right, and healthy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother.